Good day there viewers and welcome to my channel. My name is Cliff. I'm a gem cutter from Australia and in today's video we'll be looking at faceting a diamond. As a recreational faceter that only facets for fun and for a hobby, I've often wondered what it would be like to facet a diamond on my own faceting machine at home. So most gem cutters like ourselves facet gems such as sapphire, quartz, topaz, zircons and various other gems but none of these gems have a hardness of over 9 and diamond is the hardest of all gem materials where on the most scale it has a hardness of 10. There is nothing else more harder in the world of gemstones than a diamond. So the most scale is not a linear scale. It ranks gems on scratch hardness. So for example, gems in the corundum family such as sapphire or ruby, it has a hardness of 9 on the Mohs scale. Yet it's twice as hard as topaz which has a hardness of 8 on the Mohs scale. A diamond which is the hardest of all gems has a ranking of 10 on the Mohs scale but it's four times as hard as a ruby or a sapphire. So because of its hardness, diamonds are usually cut on specialized faceting machines where they're held within a claw and usually cut on a cast iron disc running at really high speeds of over 1500 RPMs a minute. So realistically I have a pretty big job ahead of me as my machine's top speed is around about 1400 at the most and you kind of need around 1500 or more. It just means that cutting a diamond is going to be really slow. Also because I don't have a specialized claw to mount the diamond into, I'm just gluing it onto a brass stop stick but I'm using a super glue because super glue is a lot more heat resistant than two part epoxy. The downside with super glue is that water can get in it and it will just tear off. But I'm hoping that because I've applied enough glue that won't happen. So I've allowed the glue to set overnight. So let's get started. I'll put the dop stick into the quill of the fasting machine. I've got the protractor angle set at about 43 degrees and then I'll start cutting the first facet on the diamond. So to start off I'll be using a 1200 grit diamond topper lap as diamond is the only thing that can actually cut the diamond and I'll be cutting right on the outer edge of the lap because this is where the highest RPMs are. So I've been at it for over 20 minutes now and you can see that I've barely made an impression with my first facet and you can see by the end of the toothpick where I've just cut the first facet and this is going to be a long day cutting this diamond. I think I'll move up to a coarser grit lap. Let's move on to a 600 grit lap and see how I go with that.
So I've been faceting for over 40 minutes now and as you can see the surface area of the facet is a little bit larger but compared to sapphire I've never struck anything like this in my life. I've faceted plenty of sapphire and literally it cuts like butter compared to a diamond. Diamond is absolutely off the scale when it comes to durability and hardness. This is just ridiculous how hard this gem is. So now I'll move on to a 240 grit lap which is as coarse as I want to go and this one's fairly worn. If I go any coarser with another lap, say like a 100 grit lap, it'll just tear the diamond off the top stick and I don't want to do that. So I've been cutting for another 20 minutes on the 240 grit lap, so all up I've been going at it for an hour, making a little bit more headway, but on the 240 grit lap clearly there's a lot more grinding going on because I can actually feel the diamond gripping onto the surface of the lap. I'm pushing fairly hard but not hard enough for the gem to come off the dock. But the odd thing is you can hear it grinding but there's no sense of cutting down to depth just continual grinding and it just says that this gem is so hard so if I have a look at what I've done now within an hour literally it could take months to cut a gem this size on a fastening machine that I have so I'm getting closer to the end of another video and to sum things up I guess it is feasible to facet a diamond at home but what a folly it would be as you could see it took me an hour to just cut that one facet as you can see in the video now and at the rate I was cutting at if you were to cut a standard round brilliant your typical gem that you see in a diamond ring it could literally take you hundreds and hundreds of hours to cut and polish that gem so that would take months of fastening anyway hopefully you've learned something from this video as it's an educational video and I'll see you in the next video and take care, it's bye for now.